Good morning, everyone. How's it going out there? Welcome back here to a Monday. It is September 22nd, 2025, just before 8 a.m. here, California time. Uh, the latest, very latest earthquake activity shows some movement here south uh, on the, uh, just off the coast of Mexico, it looks like. Now, this is just an overall pattern here of some adjustment taking place here across the eastern Pacific. Uh, we know that because, well, there's been an earthquake out there around the San Francisco Bay Area inland off of the San Andreas Fault. Uh, that may be a little bit more concerning because it did strike here on the Hayward Fault. A 4.3 earthquake coming in early this morning. Now, there's only been one aftershock of a 2.3 magnitude here a number of hours later. That's a little unusual there for a 4.3 leading me to believe that this is some type of foreshock activity. Uh, the Hayward Fault is a very dangerous system here that runs through the East Bay, capable of up to a 7.0 earthquake. Uh, the reason why it's so dangerous is, well, all got to do here with proximity. Highly populated area of the East Bay. Now that, uh, you know, most people think the San Andreas Fault is the main Culprit of uh, big earthquakes around the Bay Area, but that is just not the case there. As you can see on the hazard map, uh, it extends well inland and away from the San Andreas Fault in terms of that potential uh, hazard. Now, the only, uh, well, the other unfortunate uh, possibility here is that this is connected. Actually, they believe it is firmly connected underneath the East Bay uh, up here around this region to the, the uh, Rogers Creek Fault meaning that the Hayward Fault and the Rogers Creek Fault are connected here underneath the bay, uh, leading uh, the potential here to a larger magnitude event. Of course, the magnitude of an earthquake or a fault system is dependent on the length of the fault, right? The entire length and, of course, the, um, the rupture length there. But some concern here that that is connected, uh, which could reach up to a 7.5 earthquake with that added uh, fault length there. But anyway, we do have to watch this for now because that's a very strange event there. Uh, 4.3, and then some odd hours later, a 2.3. Very well could be four shock activity, folks. We do have to watch that. That 4.3 is going to be felt uh, no matter where you're at, uh, you know, in terms of uh, location there from that earthquake. It was felt all the way up around Santa Rosa. Sacramento felt it all the way down to Santa Cruz. Uh, I'm up here in Chico. I didn't feel it. Of course, I was sleeping about 2.30 in the morning. Not going to be up that late. Way past that time in my life where I stay up all night like that. I'm a, I like to get in bed a little bit early. But yeah, it's about 3 o'clock or so in the morning. 4.7 miles deep. The aftershock there, 7.44. So that was just a, uh, just a short time ago there let's see if that showed up on the seismograph stations i don't have anything specifically there in the bay but i think i am right now going to add it here after the update i do have a park field section here uh, but this was uh, just outside of berkeley of course you know highly super highly populated area and that uh slip rate up there let me show you guys real quick something here some information on the hayward fault okay now, this information you can find anywhere throughout, uh, you know, the, the Internet. It uh, last had a big earthquake back in 1868. Okay, that was a pretty, pretty good size one. Uh, it is a typical right lateral strike slip fault, meaning that the land on either side moves horizontally past each other. That's very common here in California. Uh, there is at least 2 million people at risk of violent shaking and potential uh, casualties there. Uh, the last event there in 1868 was a magnitude 6.8 that happened October 21st, 1868. Now, due to its high activity and long interval since the last major event, the Hayward Fault is often referred to as a ticking time bomb. The, you know, I always talk about time here, right? Geology and plate tectonics. It's all got to do with time. A lot of time has passed there, right? So the Hayward Fault, on average there... Uh, sees uh, an earthquake in between 140 and 150 years. So if you think about that, 1868 to 2025, well, that's 157 years. This article was put out, uh, you know, obviously it looks like seven hours, or seven hours ago, excuse me, seven years ago. Um, 
so look, we're past that normal interval. 140 to 150 years, the average reoccurrence rate for large events. This right here, this looks like foreshock activity. It's not like we had a 4.3 and many, many, many aftershocks. This is concerning uh, for this area, and it's right on the Hayward Fault. Over the last week or so, let's see if it's been over the last week. Yeah, uh, more so about the last 10 days or so, we've seen activity on the Hayward Fault, some smaller quake activity, but also some various other fault systems inland showing activity, such as the Greenville Fault and uh, areas around the delta here the vaca fault zone indicating there that the strain you know sometimes they transfer off of different areas and you can see um a fault that may be accumulating that stress and when you think about the amount of time that has passed out here uh, it only makes sense here to watch this one right here not the san andreas fault because 1906 geologically speaking is fairly recent i don't think we'll see any earthquake activity in terms of big nature uh, on the uh, San Andreas Fault, the northern segment, because 1906 is, again, fairly recent there, just over 100 years. Areas down south, the central section, and the southern branch specifically, well, that's well overdue. Uh, so we do got to watch this here, folks. Um, if you felt this earthquake today, let me know uh, what it felt like, whether it's a jolt or, uh, you know, kind of most of the time, it, most people say it as a jolt, but I want to know if you how long it lasted, what it felt like. That type of uh, information there is fairly valuable here in regards to um, uh, the earthquake that struck out there. I believe this came in at a little bit higher magnitude. Um, let's see here. I believe it was came in as a 4.8, but uh, yeah, that's a 4.3 downgrade from a... From a um, 4.8 they don't have an well they do have uh the aftershock forecast up here don't take this don't don't count on this okay they're showing that there's only a 18 percent chance of a 3.0 this is just your typical textbook automated here's your forecast for a 4.3 on a fault system that's you know well overdue for a big seven pointer this is something they had out here in 2019 as well. Remember the July 4th, July 5th sequence of events down in Ridgecrest? Well, one day they had a, on the 4th, they had a 6.9. And then one day later, a 7.1, I believe, was the magnitude. And they showed less than a 1% chance of a 7.0 happening. So this is irrelevant. This means nothing. I don't even know why they added it up here. But they should know better, right? The, faults, the fault out here in the Bay Area, the Hayward Fault, is overdue. It's uh, it's definitely building up out here. So, um, looking out here, that's just crazy that there's only been one aftershock, folks. That's not normal <laughs> for California. Normally, you get a four point three out here, and it's swarmed with you know forty aftershocks or so. It's a little odd. That's why I say it could very well be four shock activity so if you are out here around the bay area today be extra vigilant watch you know where you're at your surroundings and whatnot you know don't stop your daily life out here i don't think any of us should stop our our normal routine but we do need to be on guard just you know look for exits if you're in a building plan your day out say well if i'm gonna ex experience some large shaking here what do i do do i exit the building do i duck and cover you know it all it's all dependent on where you're at during that big event but also you got to make sure you're somewhat prepared right uh the my shake early alert notification app there is a really good one anyone out here along the west coast should have it it's called my shake so that activity there definitely definitely uh concerning we did see a little bit of movement down south here as well in the last hour that's a 5.4 so it does look like the eastern area here of the Pacific Plate is trying to make some adjustment here, north and south. Definitely showing up here. Um, not so much in Southern California, but you got to remember this area is well-primed for some big earthquake activity as well. 
It's not like we had the big one here in Southern California 100 years ago. That's not it. It's been way longer than that. In fact, this little segment here of the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault did not rupture during the last event there in 1857, I believe it was. Um, may have even been longer than that. So that means the uh, p potentially the entirety here of the southern branch will go, resulting in up to an 8.1. So over 300 years since uh, this little segment down here. Uh, there's a little bit of smaller microquake activity there in Southern California today, but uh, just be on guard, folks. Things are starting to crack out here. Looks like there's another earthquake right now here in the last minute, or last couple minutes of a 2.6. Things are starting to get moving out here. Watch that, folks. That is not something you want to see on a well-strained fault system, okay? I'm telling you guys. All right, real quick uh, glance here at the rest of the world. See if we got anything else going on here uh, as far as any movement. No, nothing big overnight. Uh, still seeing some aftershock activity there in Turkey. Bunch of aftershock activity. Uh, that's supposedly from a six-pointer that struck here a couple months back, but they're seeing... A huge swarm of activity there. I'm thinking something bigger is brewing out there in the region. Uh, nothing else major going on. Still got aftershock activity there across the Kamchatka Trench. Right now, I think all eyes here on the west coast. Got uh, some interesting activity stirring up out here. And there's definitely a lot of information you can find on the Hayward Fault. But I think the main thing we all need to know is that it's got potential up here to the Rogers Creek Fault, resulting in even a larger than the 7.0 earthquake with that fault length connection underneath the East Bay. This sits just outside of Oakland as well. You know, we're talking about a massive amount of people here in the concrete jungle of the Bay Area. The Hayward Fault is just right there. So a 7-pointer, that... Uh, even a 6.8 out there would be quite damaging. And that's the last magnitude they've seen there back in uh, the 1868 time frame. 6.8. Remember this, folks. 140 to 150 years on average. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. But it's been 157 years. 150 here because well, this article was put out uh, a little bit ago. Seven years ago. All right, quick glance here at space weather activity. See if anything's going on here. Pretty quiet in terms of that. Uh, really not seeing any flaring activity. Corona hole number 80 is um, off towards the western limb here. That uh, was supposed to stir up some high-speed uh, solar wind. Well, it shoots out high-speed solar wind streams. It was supposed to stir up the auroras, which doesn't look like it did. Looks pretty quiet out there. Uh, this is fairly recent, right? Yeah, so nothing really going on there in terms of the aurora activity. No major solar flares expected for now. I mean, there's obviously a lot of sunspots out here that's just popped up uh, on the Earth-facing side. But really nothing of concern here. They're all disorganized. Uh, I guess if you were to twist my arm in the area I would watch, it would be 4226 back here, maybe 4220. But uh, really not expecting much. Notice quite a few of these are offline. Well, the, the uh, SDO site's having some image issues for some reason. All right, a uh, quick glance here at the Storm Prediction Center. Got a bunch of slight risk categories added here across the country. A little 2% chance there for some tornado activity in the green wind and even some large hail threat for the start of your work week. All right, I'm going to be monitoring this activity here, folks, in the Bay Area. Like I say, I do think this is some type of foreshock activity for hours to pass before an aftershock sequence. Uh, that's a little unusual. Now we're starting to get earthquake activity back to back here in the last couple minutes. I'm going to get this video out. Uh, what you need to do is be prepared. Have an earthquake plan. Uh, main thing is, is your safety and getting to safety uh, following or during a large event. And the earthquake, my it's called my shake. That app gave me a 20-second notification here last year when that seven-pointer struck up here in Northern California off the coast. I'm over here in Chico. You know, obviously, it's going to be a little bit more distant in terms of time. If you're directly in Oakland and have a seven-pointer, 
and my shake early alert notification system goes off, it's probably going to go off during the earthquake. So you're really not going to have much time, but it's worth downloading. Even if it's a couple seconds, it still gives you a chance to say, hey, let's uh, get to a safe spot. You know, and that safe spot is depending uh, on your current location where you're going to be at. Whether it's under a desk, you know, some underneath something sturdy or, or outside away from buildings, power lines and stuff like that. Just be observant of everything. Think about stuff like that because this could very well be foreshock activity, folks. I hope it's not, but I haven't. I don't recall the last time we've seen a 4.3 out here on the Hayward Fault. Let's take a look here real quick, see what we got. We're just going to go 4.0 and above. We'll go back here to 1980. Just check here real quick. See what we got there on the Hayward Fault. Um, that does go down a little bit. So I don't... Man, that's just... There's going to be a lot of earthquake activity in there, but we'll check here real quick. Looking for the Hayward Fault right here. Okay, so specifically on the Hayward Fault... Uh, this one was back in 1994. Here's today's event, 4.3. 4.4 in 2018. So that's somewhat recent. 2015 for that one. 2003. 4.0. Yeah, we've had a couple four-pointers out here, but, you know, I don't, I'm not going to go back here on the aftershock sequences of all these individual ones, but that's the thing that is concerning there is that there's been, you know, an extended amount of time between our aftershock sequence out here now just starting to get some in uh, anyway I'm gonna upload this video here folks and I'll be covering this I'll be off here on the side uh, from the live stream have a good day and uh, we'll talk to you guys soon